Fully assembled. Sub-assembled. Fully assembled. Sub-assembled. Hey guys, I'm Nimei here. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever gone through this? Where you wanted to paint your miniature model only for you to start making hard decisions. Alright, I can paint this model but dang, his arms over here is blocking me for painting. Or, okay, I got the model all painted up and ready to go. What? It took me 4 hours? Oh no. The glue ruined the model as well. Although it sounds like a small problem, the thing is that it's actually going to be a big problem later on when you start painting. Now you could see some paints that aren't supposed to be there because you couldn't reach that part or when the glue is showing up or if you overdo the painting just to realize that the area is not supposed to be that light or that dark. However, the best way to find out is by painting because actions speak louder than words. And I'm gonna paint two of the new Amazon team members from Blood Bowl. They're both gonna be the same pose, the same sprue, and I'm going to paint the same way and the same colors. If you wonder why I choose this unit, it's because I would want to put a challenge here where it would be hard for me to reach certain surfaces to paint. I'm rotating the brush I use. This is a small model, so I don't really need that big brush. Let's get to it. We're gonna start with the outfit. First, the armor. I'll base it with Cantor Blue. But wait, isn't the color supposed to be turquoise green? Well, yes, but this is for the dark shadow base. And how I will paint it is to have a color that is almost the same color target but different. So if you want orange, start with dark red then orange. It's kind of the reason why Citadel base colors are mostly dark. So the brighter color could be layered. Or in this case, you can also start with dark yellow and then later use some washed yellow and then add bright yellow. I don't have the green that they showed but after testing, I found out there is green skin and white from Army Painters. So I mix it all up and start painting. Now to prepare for the gold part. Remember when I said you could add some Rhinox height to just start for the base. So I'm adding it right now. Time to add the bronze. So this is Psychorax bronze. Be careful right here because your age highlighting this bronze. The bronze is done, now the other part of the metal. So we're gonna add some lead belcher for the claws. So once the lead belcher is dried, we're gonna add some contrast talasar blue. Add red color for the gem and we are ready. For painting the hair, we're going to add some white. So I'm going to be using some Liquitex Professional White Ink. I'm going to keep coating until it is a solid white. But not too much because you don't want to have too much of your paint inside. Now that's fully white, we're going to add some wash. So it's going to be a shade Soul Blight Grey and Tyrant Blue. We're going to add the grey first and then the blue. And now for the feathers. So we're going to add two feathers having orange and red. So it's going to be Magma Job Flame Contrast and Bill Red Contrast. And the other one, going to add some Bad Moon Yellow with Coila Green Shade. Now for the skin. We're going for the dark screen for this model. And I'm following the skin formula from the Hobby Grotto. Go check him out, he's pretty good. He has a nice technique and he shows other kind of skins. The recipe is to base Rhinox height. Then add Doom Bowl Brown. And then wet blank kiss air flesh. Mix around until it looks perfect enough for this style. When I'm planning to do the face, I recommend doing the eyes first if you are very cautious over the eyes. Eyes are hard to do, but it's a fun challenge. The reason is because there's a chance you might be correcting the eyes constantly as it's pretty hard to color the eyes especially when it comes to Warhammer figures. Once the eyes are done, you can proceed with the face. So do the same style 
and yes so i'm good i'm actually coloring the cheeks and the nose because those are usually the part that is actually highlighted more the skin's ready it looks like the figure is finished but we're not done yet one last part now we got to do some basing so it's going to be a simple one as i'm going to just be using agrolan earth because the texture is going to be cracked on the floor make sure you wait for the base to dry it'll take a while because this is a wet paint once it dries up you're going to see the crack happening the sub assembly as you can see is actually easy for me because all i have to do is just mark the foot steps and then later avoid that area while i'm painting it and once it's dried up and it cracked ready now we can decorate it decorate it with one white stripe add a tuft i forgot to add some transfer so let's go give it a shot i'm gonna use a white skull on the shoulder pad i need to cut out the white skulls and then soak it inside water let's wait for a while and just carefully put it in okay transfer is still hard for me but i'm learning right here <laughs> and we are done So here they are, ready for the game, fully assembled and sub-assembled. Now which is better? Well, they're both alright, but here's my decision. If you want the model to be done as soon as possible, go for the full assemble. Because you don't really mind the details as long as it looks good. But if you want your model to be more detailed and look prettier, go for the sub-assemble. I can see that I mostly paint like this, and it does make me satisfied when the model looks pretty good. Do you like painting fully assembled or sub-assembled? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for being here. Like and subscribe for more. This is Omni Ming saying thank you, goodbye, good luck, and have fun miniature painting. <laughs>